Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So the new roadmap brings a lot of new exciting features and content for ships. So in this video, I want to take a look. As always, a big thank you to all of my patrons and channel members who allow me to make these kinds of videos, in particular to my latest patron, Vita Corpen, and to my latest channel member, Turkey120. Thank you both for all the support. So previously, I have made a video highlighting all of the upcoming ships on the new progress tracker slated to be worked on this year. Well, today I would like to talk more about all of the ship content and features, so anything related to ships also being worked on this year. So we're going to kick it off with actually two features coming with the first patch of the year at the end of March, so Alpha 313. We have the ship to station docking and the Merlin and Constellation docking. Docking has been a long time in the works and it's finally making its way into the Persistent Universe. This will allow any ship with a docking collar to dock onto a station and allow players to walk onto or out of their ships without needing to land in a hangar or on a landing pad. It has a nine week sprint from art and design beginning this month and ending mid-March. And it says adding the ability to dock ships with space stations and other ships. This also includes spawning docked ships at space stations and within larger vessels. Now it sounds like this feature also includes the ability to spawn vehicles in larger vehicles, but I don't think that is the case due to the next feature of vehicle to vehicle spawning, which I will get to in a second. But I would think that this feature will include both docking collar types. We have the circular two meter diameter collar and the larger rectangular collar, which I believe is two by four meters. It also mentions on the card docking to other ships. Now at first it sounds like it's only going to apply to docking to space stations and then later on we'll get the ship to ship docking. For the Constellation and Merlin this will make many Constellation owners very happy as they will finally be able to use the Merlin to fend off attackers which has been a long time coming as well. Again it's a nine week sprint this time from engineering starting towards the end of January and finishing towards the end of March so hopefully it doesn't get pushed back. So as mentioned, the vehicle to vehicle loadout spawning is next on the list. Now this only has a two week engineering sprint, but it starts at the beginning of July and ends halfway through July, which is why I was confused when it said for ship to station docking, spawning docked ships within larger vessels. Maybe it means the tech required to do so once the vehicle to vehicle tech is done. I don't know. Do let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. But this card says it enables item ports and cargo grids to support vehicle loading via the VMA or the Vehicle Manager app. This will also allow ASOP terminals to report vehicle in vehicle statuses. And this will be a great quality of life improvement as we will no longer have to land somewhere to load up a vehicle separately to the vehicle that we've spawned. So the next feature is quite a big one and should redefine the cargo hauling profession somewhat. Cargo System Refactor. Now this will allow for both found and purchased cargo to be picked up, moved around and placed into the cargo grid of a ship. It has a 20 week sprint from both engineering and design, starting in January and finishing off at the end of May and should be a pretty significant sprint to help further develop the hauling system. So being able to move the cargo that you buy from a kiosk that's placed in your cargo hold and actually physically interact with it, which we can't do right now. Next up, we have the Hangar Manager app version 1. This says it's creating a MobiGlass app that emulates the functionality of the ASOP terminals, allowing players to spawn ships, claim insurance, and access the array of landing services to maintain their ships. So all of the functionality of the ship terminals with the ability to repair, rearm, and refuel all in one place wherever you go. Now, this is a very useful app and likely a starting point for a personal fleet manager so being able to manage all of your ships and know their locations and statuses, which will be of great importance when everything is physicalized. This has a 34 week sprint from art, design and engineering beginning in April and ending towards the end of November. So quite a big set of tasks, but it's going to be very useful having it all on your wrist rather than having to refuel, rearm and repair when you land and then going to the ship terminals to do anything else you need and will most likely apply to only places that have the ability to repair and so on. So you can't just land anywhere on a planet and then refuel your ship. You'll have to be somewhere that would offer the option of refueling. So one of the cooler pieces of tech getting a lot of love this year is the SDF shields or sign distance field shields. Now it states adapting shield code to determine shield hits based off of dynamically contoured shield meshes for more accurate combat gameplay 
and to eliminate possible weak spots in shields. This also extends shield tech to entities beyond just vehicles. This sign distance field tech is very exciting and has been already used in many other applications like aerodynamic flight. This particular card has a four week engineering sprint beginning between mid-March and early April and it is going to be a massive quality of life improvement for all ships especially when there are shield holes in some ships and it will just look visually better as well so I'm very excited that this is getting implemented this year. So there's a couple of cards that relate to physicalized components and starting with shields we have shield emitters. This is a 16 week sprint scheduled for art starting in April and ending in early August. A five week engineering sprint beginning mid October till mid November and then a two week art and design sprint from mid April till the end of April. Now it says converting ship shield emitters into physicalized objects that can be targeted and destroyed, giving players the ability to permanently disable enemy shields. This will mean more tactile and realistic ship combat, which is great to see work for this on the 2021 roadmap. Now I don't think this is referring to the actual shield component because that is a shield generator. I think the shield generators feed the shield emitters which then project the shield onto the surface of your ship. So it could more just be these emitters that are dotted around the ship that can be damaged and need to be replaced rather than the actual physical shield generator component. But next up in the component is the ship CPU. This says designing and implementing ship computer blades for ships and this includes various blades that can be used to modify or improve certain aspects of ship functionality such as unlocking more complex targeting abilities. Now I have created a separate video talking more about the planned CPU blades which I will link in the description below if you are interested. This card has a 31 week design and engineering sprint with design sprint starting in January and ending mid-February and engineering sprint starting in mid-May and ending in mid-August. So next up we have capacitors version 1 which we have heard about a few times over the course of last year and these relate to our current ship systems and having more control and use over them. We have weapon, shields and thruster capacitors. These capacitors are to provide more energy to the systems you need when you decide on what your priorities are, be that to attack, to defend or run away. But should you make the wrong decision, there will be greater punishments, thus rewarding more tactical and thought out gameplay. For weapon capacitors version 1, it says players will have the ability to manage the amount of extra energy that goes into weapons, making critical decisions on the distribution of energy in order to defend, attack or run. Weapon Capacitors version 1 has a 5 week design sprint starting at the beginning of February and ending early March and a 4 week design sprint starting towards the end of April and ending towards the end of May. For Shield Capacitors version 1 it states when complete players will have the ability to manage the extra amount of energy distribution to shields allowing them to choose between maximizing defenses or using that power to attack or escape. The shield capacitors has a 47 week sprint from engineering and design with engineering work beginning in January and ending mid-June and designs work starting mid-May and ending at the end of December. So a long way to go for shield capacitors. Finally we have thruster capacitors version 1. This is a 15 week sprint from design beginning early August and ending mid-November and it says players will have the ability to manage the amount of extra energy that goes into thrusters making critical decisions on the distribution of energy in order to defend, attack or just run away. Now I'm really intrigued to see how this capacitor gameplay will change vehicle combat. I'm not sure I'm entirely sold on this whole premise but I am sure that it will make more sense when we begin to see it progress and how it works. Do let me know your thoughts on capacitor gameplay though. So one feature that I'm really excited for is hull visual degradation and the great thing about this card is that it's releasing with the first patch of the year. Now it says introducing visual wear and tear to players ships as they age and degrade. When implemented ships will subtly change depending on how long they have existed in the verse. Now this isn't the physical damage system, this is aging and will eventually apply to everything in the verse like weapons, clothing and armor for example and I do love how things will visually age over time. I do expect it'll help us grow more attached to our ships as well. I do wonder though if the ships will visually degrade based on where they are located so maybe in a wet climate causing more rusting and then in a dry red desert for example maybe you'll have a buildup of red sand. 
Either way, it has a three-week engineering sprint between January and February, and as I say, it's coming in the first patch. So Ground Vehicles version 2 is next on my list. This has a five-week sprint from engineering and design, which is happening around the end of October and beginning of December, so not until the end of the year, unfortunately. But it does say, update and improve the current ground vehicle movement parameters and simulation for more robust tuning and identity between various ground vehicles. So very happy to see that there are plans in 2021 for ground vehicles, as they certainly do need a lot of love. But CIG did state last year that vehicles of flight, so ships, are the priority for the time being. Like what we'll see with the next card being controllable surfaces, which is something they wanted to bring out before they started tackling the ground vehicles. But at least they are beginning that this year. So one huge addition to aerodynamic flight are the control surfaces. This is basically referring to flaps and ailerons. Its description reads, ships with control surfaces will have the ability to use them in atmosphere to aid their maneuverability. This will allow for improved performance from ships that have weak maneuvering thrusters in atmosphere and bring new depth to aerodynamic flight in the game. Now this is going to really make aerodynamic flight feel far more realistic and I'm very excited for this to come in. Unfortunately, the work doesn't begin until the end of the year. It has a five-week engineering sprint starting mid-November and ending mid-December, but it will certainly be worth the wait. So another feature coming to Alpha 313, so the first patch of the year, is vehicle names and serial numbers. This says adding the ability for ships to display custom player assigned names on the side of their ships. Special serial numbers will also be shown and all other ships will have unique serial numbers displayed to identify them in the verse. Now this means that we can finally officially name our ships and it sounds as though you'll be able to name them whatever you like within reason of course, with even multiple ships sharing the same name. A CIG developer did say that ship names will not need to be unique, they have serial numbers for that and as far as they're aware ship names reserved as part of prior promotions and sales that are unique are still unique. He's referring to specifically future general ship names that are not required to all be unique. So this is great news. You can all start naming your ships whatever you want as the serial numbers will be the unique ID for them. So get thinking of those names. Next up is space bombs and mines. This says players will have the ability to drop powerful bombs over targets in atmosphere from ships. In space players will gain the ability to release space mines in a coordinated fashion in an attempt to trap and capture. Now this card has an 11 week sprint from engineering lined up for January until almost the end of March. It's hard to know just how this is going to work with its actual release. Will we be using the Hercules A2 or the Nautilus or both? We'll have to wait to find out I'm afraid. For the next feature we have improvements to missiles. This is a 5 week design sprint between January and February and a 3 week engineering sprint around the same time and is the conversion of missiles to use the IFCS guidance and control system so the intelligent flight control system that ships use and it says this will improve missile performance and tracking ability enabling greater control over general missile behaviors. Now this alongside the missile operator mode coming in 3.13 will hopefully make missiles and torpedoes much more viable and fun than they are now even though they have greatly improved them for 3.12. Another improvement card is the turret usability improvements, which is an 11 week engineering sprint starting mid-June and finishing towards the end of August. This says further improvements to turret gameplay, including giving gunners more flexibility and support when using additional weaponry. Now turrets again have been greatly improved over the last year, making them both useful and fun. Uh, this I expect will just further enhance turrets, although I'm not entirely sure what the changes are going to involve but surely they will make them better. Next up, we have the MFD rework or multifunction display rework, which is to rebuild all of the ship's MFDs with the new building blocks UI tech, as well as completely redesign them in an effort to make them more customizable, better matched to ship aesthetics and better at serving ship gameplay. This has a 29 week engineering sprint starting in early February and ending towards the end of August. Now we actually got to see the Aegis UI in a recent Inside Star Citizen and it looks phenomenal and I cannot wait to see the rest of the manufacturer's UIs come into the game, especially Drake. I feel like that's going to be a special one. 
Next up is fuel scoop mixing. This has a seven week engineering sprint beginning mid-October and ending at the beginning of December, so not for a while, unfortunately. But this says improvements to how hydrogen intakes regenerate fuel. It takes into account environmental density and availability of various gases and allows you to mix different kinds of gases for different efficiencies. Now, it's nice to see that the fuel mechanic is getting a little love. Hopefully with these gas clouds now in the PU, we can sort of utilize them for collecting gases and hopefully get some love for the staff there and the refueling mechanic. Now, one aspect that I'm very interested in seeing develop is multi-crew, having actual tangible stuff to do on board of a ship other than just being a pilot or firing turrets. The starting point of this is the multi-crew permission system. And this card states, the system will allow players to assign roles to each other in running large ships. Roles determine what access you have to view and manipulate ship systems, and players will be able to customize this as they need. Now, this is going to be vital when running and operating larger vessels, ensuring everyone has a role and keeping the ship safe. So, for example, granting a new member of the org permissions to only use turrets and access the mess and habitation means they won't be able to access the vital areas and systems of the ship until they have built up enough trust within the org. Kind of like a captain's overview of who has access to what at any given time. Now this feature has a five week engineering sprint starting in mid-October and ending in mid-December and I'm really excited to see this but unfortunately it won't be till towards the end of the year. The next feature is vehicle radar and scanning. This has a seven week engineering and design sprint beginning this month and ending towards the end of February and it says radar is used to passively locate and track contacts and display their whereabouts to the player. Scanning is used to obtain information about a specific entity. Ping actively finds additional contacts or highlights volumes of space to investigate weak signatures, both of which are displayed via the radar and its AR HUD elements. Now this is going to be a pretty useful update for introducing more exploration elements to the PU as well. When it says volumes of space to investigate weak signatures, this kind of means scanning space and honing in on anomalies of various types based on their signatures. And it's going to heavily play into the exploration profession. Now, exploration is also an aspect of the game that Chris Roberts mentioned he would like to expand on this year. And improving the scanning and radar functionality is going to be a part of that. But also just updating the radar scanning and ping functionality from what we have now to the next phase or the next tier is going to be a big quality of life improvement as well. The next feature on the list is something that we've seen introduced on a couple of new ships, the 100 series and the most recent being the Mercury Star Runner. Animated dashboard state is what this card is called and it requires an eight week sprint from both design and engineering beginning early October and ending at the beginning of December. Now this says finalizing the Gladius's dashboard buttons with multi states and fully demonstrable with a procedural animation for each state. So literally every button on the Gladius dash will be animated and if you push it your character's hand will reach out and actually press it. It appears they are starting with the Gladius probably due to it being in Squadron 42 as a preview and then how it will work and how it looks will then start applying to all the other ship dashboards. Not a super necessary feature but it will definitely help drive the immersion. The next card we have is Culling, Streaming, Interior and Exterior Ships. This says that when complete, the game engine will no longer render the interiors and exteriors of ships when not required. It has a six week engineering sprint starting at the end of August and finishing at the beginning of December. And this will definitely help to improve the performance for players as you will no longer have to stream in and out every interior and exterior of the ship all the time. So the final feature on the list is cargo door and elevator alignment to terrain. Now this is a nice quality of life improvement as I'm sure we've all been stuck on a planet unable to get back into the ship at some point in our Star Citizen lives because you've landed and you can't access the ramp again. This says doors and elevators across all ships dynamically adjust to the terrain below them within a specific range. It has a four week engineering sprint beginning late October and finishing late November. So that is all the current features and content being worked on for ships and vehicles this year in 2021. There is a lot in the works and these features will begin making their way to our ships this year. And I'm very excited to see that happening. Starting with Alpha 313, we are getting the missile operator mode and the missile rework, vehicle names and serial numbers, visual vehicle degradation, 
ship to station and the Merlin Constellation docking. So it's a great start to the year for ship content. With that said though, do let me know if I've missed anything off. And if you enjoy my content, be sure to hit subscribe and tick that notification bell if you want to be notified when my videos go live. Also, if you could do the channel a big favor and hit that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to talk more about Star Citizen, do be sure to follow me over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. The link is in the description below. Cannot do this without my patrons and channel members, so thank you so much to those guys for all the support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.